Nobody's stealing covers I like to drink to myself So I'ma have another no. I don't need a hint to hold tight Don't need a love that's all mine But sometimes I just want somebody to do Peace, love, and light, my beautiful gods and goddesses I am Queen Spirit, and welcome to Veggie Me Please. Now, I know you guys are wondering, where's the power of three? Don't worry, they will be back next week. We have decided to shake things up a little bit so that we can put more information out for you guys on a weekly basis. And the way that we're going to be successful at that is if you leave us your comments in the comments section below. Leave us your suggestions, leave us your comments, leave us your questions. No question is a dumb question. The only dumb question is the one you don't ask. If you need us to elaborate more on something, leave it in the comment section. If you would like for us to put out a podcast about something, leave it in the comment section. And that's how we're going to get you the information that you need to help you to be successful on your journey. Like I said, we can give you the blueprint. But you have to find out what works for you. So tell us what you need from us and we will give it to you. Because what worked for me may not work for you. But we are all in this journey together. Because when we heal us, we heal generations after generations after generations after and before us. We are basically recreating our DNA. Did you hear what I said? That means that when your ancestors transcend to their next level in their journey, they will no longer put out the information that they gave us because we have changed the dynamics. We're putting out a whole nother line of information and they have to grasp that because their information is now invalid. Girl, King, you're a hero. You are a hero. <coughs> mm. Excuse me. I think it's some pollen outside. I don't know, but honey, I got me some ginger and some lemon and some manuka honey uh, steeping in this hot water in my unicorn cup. And um, I've been sipping on it and it's making me feel a little bit better. But oh, this pollen is, ugh. But that's called holistic living there. But yeah, um, one of my wonderful subscribers uh, suggested that we did a podcast basically saying what was the callus for the turning point in our journey. And I wanted to go ahead and do mine first because I know mine is kind of like a two, three point part. Um, I'm going to start with the, with the end because when I got totally fed up, um, I got totally fed up with my last relationship because it was totally my fault. And the one thing that we need to learn how to do is to hold ourselves accountable for the fuck ups in our lives. Because the one thing that I know for certain, nobody could have did anything to me that I didn't allow. And I allowed that person in my life knowing that they shouldn't have been. That person showed me their red flag from the beginning. And that's to no, throw no shade at that person because that person has a beautiful heart. And once he heals, he is going to make someone a great husband. I truly thought that he could have been the one because on an intellectual level, he was awesome. He had a lot of information. He had a great heart and was super nurturing and caring, but he was damaged. He was broken. He had been through some things and he wasn't willing to share a lot of things. And he was still embarrassed by a lot of things that he had been through. So he wasn't ready to heal. So he basically... Um, drank a lot, an awful lot, to basically um, not have to deal with whatever demons or baggage 
that he was holding on to. And from, like I said, from the beginning, I knew, I even told him that I didn't think we were a good match. I was like, you know, everybody ain't for everybody. But he kept trying to convince me that, you know, we were for each other. And I allowed myself to have feelings for him, knowing that I shouldn't have because I knew I really didn't want to be one of them. So when the relationship was over in a few short months, I was devastated. And it wasn't because he broke my heart. I was devastated because I allowed him to come into my life knowing that I really didn't want to be with him. And that was when I was like, enough is enough. I was like, why are you sitting up here self-destructing your own self? What is wrong with you is what I asked myself. And then when, let's say the beginning of my journey was when I lost my son. That is a type of hurt I can never explain. And I would never want anybody else to endure. That hurt is... It's just, like I said, it's unexplainable. I literally felt like my whole entire life was over. I did not even know how to move on from it. This was the one thing that I knew I couldn't fix. Everything else in my life, I've always tried to fix it. I've always had an answer. That's the one thing I knew I couldn't fix because I couldn't bring my son back. If I could have brought my son back, I could have fixed or or attempted to fix everything that was wrong with him. But he was gone, so I couldn't fix it. And that's the part I couldn't get past. I couldn't get past it. So that's when <clears throat> my healing journey began. That's when I lost my son. <clears throat> and uh, individuals was trying to tell me what they thought getting back to normal was supposed to be. And again, I embarked on a relationship that I knew I truly did not want to be in. The guy I was dating, he he wasn't supportive when I lost my son. He had asked me to marry him before my son passed away. But when my son passed away, he was not supportive. And I was so angry with him. But now that I'm a better me, I'm not angry with him because he didn't know how to be there for me. He didn't even know how to be there for himself. Everything in that man's life had to be answered by his mama. Everything. Even after we got married, he still had to get approval from his mama about everything that went on in his life. And like I said, from the beginning, I knew I didn't want to be with this man. But I still embarked on a relationship with him. So when my subscriber asked the question, it made me actually do some shadow work. And we will talk more about shadow working, but I'll give you a brief description. Shadow working is basically what's behind you. Your shadow is always behind you and it's always following you. Shadow working is going back deep inside of yourself and addressing issues. The way that you do shadow working is most people do it is with journaling. The way that I do it is I will write myself notes or letters. Like I'll, an age will come to me, like five-year-old me, and I'll start writing to five-year-old me, things I can remember. And while I'm writing, other things will come up. And then I will address either good or bad the issue that happened to me at five years old as the person I am now. Like seven-year-old me, I address and I love on her because that's what she wanted. That's what she needed. And most of my life, that's what I wanted. I just wanted someone to love on me, to give me that motherly love. And so that's what I give five-year-old me, seven-year-old me. How do you do that, Queen Spirit? I'm gonna tell you. You close your eyes and you breathe. You deep breathe in and you slowly breathe out. And you imagine yourself at seven, five, 13, 20, whatever age you need to, you imagine yourself at that age. And then you imagine yourself at this age 
a whole separate entity. It's two of you. And you go to that person as that mother, as that sister, as that friend, and you love on her. And you cry with her or you cry with him and you let them know it's going to be okay. And you give, you put, you feel it in your heart. And let me tell you, it's not, it's going to hurt. It's not going to be easy. It's depending on how deep the wound is. It's going to hurt, but it's going to help you to grow and to move past that level in your life. A lot of us are still holding on to when we were five years old. As, and we're in our 50s and 60s. You have to let that go so that you can heal and become a better you. And it, and it starts with you. We are healing generations after generations and our ancestors as well. Because what they told us would no longer be what we're telling the next generation. We're telling them what we did to heal and we're giving them a different avenue on how to live their life. The one thing we all have is free will. Yeah, we're taught we have to listen to our parents, of course. But at some point in your life, you have the ability to live your life how you want to. And you don't have to live it the way your parents taught you. A prime example is when I was married after my son passed away. Like I said, I didn't want to be with him, but I married him anyway. And he cheated on me three months into the marriage. <clears throat> I was angry. I understand why now, because I was a broken woman and sex was the last thing on my mind. I would give it to him because I felt like I had to, but I wasn't giving it, giving it. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't putting my back in it. I wasn't, you know, dropping it like it's hot. I laid there. I no lie. And I let him, hate saying like this, but I let him do his business because I was broken. I didn't even love myself. But I was like, well, I guess I got to give it to him. But like I said, he had the opportunity to walk away when my son passed away. And I wouldn't have hated him or even thought less of him because it takes a real man to realize that he's not able to handle a certain situation. And he had every right to walk away because he could not handle a broken woman. But he didn't. He told my family he would stay. <clears throat> And they trusted him, entrusted him with me. And he didn't. He he cheated. And my mother, when I called her and told her that he cheated, she asked me, she was like, um, well, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to leave him. And this is what we mean by generational curses. Because it was taught to her that you had to stay. She told me that. And I stayed. She was like, you don't want to have another failed marriage. And I was just like, okay, I stayed. And he cheated again. Now I left his ass that time. I didn't care what nobody said because you're not going to keep cheating on me. But at that moment, I was just, I remember talking to my mother on the phone and I was just like, when is it going to stop? Like, I feel like I'm cursed. Like, who tr gives this much hurt to one person? Who gives this much pain to one person? Especially a person that has a heart like I do. <clears throat> and that's when my journey began um, because I couldn't pray no more. I couldn't pray to God because I couldn't understand him at that moment. I didn't want to read the Bible because... It was nothing in that Bible that could to, to tell me why I was still going through what I was going through. I couldn't. I, I kept trying to believe that God gave the hardest assignments to his strongest disciples, but I, I just didn't feel like I was that strong. I like that I feel like this was cruelty to keep being given all of this hurt. <clears throat> and then this girl at my job gave me uh a rose quartz and she gave me an amethyst and 
I didn't, I wasn't attracted to the analysis. Um, I like the rose quartz. I liked how I felt on my hand, but it, it, I didn't feel, I wasn't receptive of the healing properties of it. I wasn't doing every, cause it's, that's, let me tell you something. You don't just get a stone and think it's going to work magic on you. It's not, that's not how it goes. It's other, it's levels to this shit. You have to do other things along with it. And that's what I didn't know. But it, it intrigued me enough to learn what else went around. Because I was like, okay, she gave me the stone and I still feel like I'm about to die right now. Like, what's going on? But it gave me it, it gave me some stepping stones to continue on the journey. And because I had started being interested in it, I started attracting other people into my life that was showing me. And I remember I was at a... Um, a pop-up shop promoting veggie me please and it was a lady there who was doing psychic and body scanning and of course you know we want to appease you know all the other vendors and she came over and bought some vegan food and she was like oh my god i've been a raw vegan but i'm going to taste your food or whatever and she's like come over and let me do a reading on you and when this lady when i say she read me she read me. She did a body scan. She took her hand. She said, and I, I'm sitting up there like this. And she said, I want to cry for you. She said, no, I want to throw up. I I really want to throw up and and cry for you. She said, you are broken and you need to let some things go. And I sat there and I looked at her and I'm like, how the hell she know this? And she still didn't give me no answer though. She just told me that information and I ran with it. It's like, dang, she was able to read that about me? Like, man, and I never forget, I went and told my, 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 my best girlfriend, I was like, girl, she told me this and that. She said, girl, she the truth. And that's when I started, like I said, looking for information, learning about the crystals, learning about meditation um, and things like that. Another part of my journey uh, is when I became a vegan. One day I just woke up and it was like, I want to see if I can try to be a vegetarian. One thing about God is we never know when he's going to put something in us. Intuition, dreams, things of that nature, all of a sudden thoughts, those are downloads from God. Take them. And I woke up one day and said I wanted to be a vegetarian. And I didn't want to give up all meat, so I was, I was, I was a pescatarian for five years. But guess what? I was so unhealthy being a pescatarian. I, I, I had high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and then I had a mini stroke. And I'm like, well, dang, what else I got to do? And still, I was still dealing with the type of guys I was dealing with and the type of situations I was dealing with. And it wasn't in between, and I'm not saying veganism is for everybody. And like I said, this is a lifestyle. This ain't for play play. This is my life. And this is what worked for me. But it wasn't until I became vegan is when a light bulb went off in my head. And it wasn't like instantly. It probably was, I was probably about a vegan for about a year and a half. And a light bulb went off on my head, in my head. And that's when I started researching self-love and uh, self-love crystals and self-love rituals and trauma and things like that. And that's when shadow working came up and journaling came up. Because like I said, I needed to get to the bottom of why, why did I keep hurting? You know, I was self-destructing myself. What I realized was I never dated a guy that I thought was on the same level as me. I didn't think I can get that type of guy because I had four children I always had guys that didn't mind coming over fucking me. 
but I never had guys that was willing to step up to the plate and be fathers to my children, not even their own fathers. So, like I said, my whole life has always been about surviving and, and providing for my children. When my son's father came into play, he um, was the first guy that was willing to accept me with my four children and be a father figure for them. And it, again, like I said, I didn't even like him like that, but I was intrigued because I had never had somebody that was willing to step up to the plate. So I accepted it. Even after we got married, even after he whooped my behind numerous times, I stayed there because he was a father for my kids. And when he took my trust and hurt my child, that hurt, I said I would never allow anybody else to do to me. So after him, I just dealt with who I dealt with. Like, have you ever thought about, let me, I'm gonna tell, an example of it is, the guys that I dealt with always said I was the best thing they ever had. That was something all they always wanted. I was their trophy. So if you have, like, say you're driving around in, in your Honda, Civic, whatever you got, I don't know, but whatever. But your dream car is like a Cadillac. Like my 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 favorite car used to be a Charger. Um, so whenever I would drive past a Charger, I'd be like, yeah, one day I'm gonna have that. So then once you get it. You take care of it. You clean it. You shine the wheels. You get the oil change. Don't eat in my car. No smoking in my car because that's your dream car, right? Well, that's how I felt about me. Um, I, ne I, dre I dated people that were not as worthy of me because I felt that they would appreciate the fact that they had hit the jackpot. But the thing of it was, was they can't appreciate the jackpot because they were broken too. I was attracting these broken men because first of all, I was broken and I didn't even realize I was broken because only a broken person would date someone that is totally beneath them. And like I said, there's no shade to these people that I dated because nobody is without sin. I used to like addictions. I used to be addicted to food. That was my drug of choice. If I get upset, if I get frustrated, if I get stressed out, I would eat, 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 eat. Some people use drugs. Some people use alcohol. Some people use sex. Some people are volatile. Everybody has their, their addiction or their whatever they do to basically get past their stress and their anger. Mine was food. So like I said, there's no shade to those people, but I knew that I was better than that. I knew I was, but it, exactly, but really, I really wasn't because I was just as broken as them. I wanted them to fix me. No lie. I wanted them to show me what true love was, unconditional love and love me, but they couldn't because they didn't even love themselves. And that is what I realized from this one question was I have been the person that has self-destructed my whole entire life because I didn't think I was worthy of it because I was hurt. I was broken. And I realized that my healing journey is being successful because I was just talking to a guy. And like I said, I would be with people knowing that I was supposed to be with them. But I this is how I know what I'm doing. I'm on the right track because um, I was recently talking to a guy. And the first day he came over, um, he was he's 51. We sat out in, in the parking lot and we talked and whatnot or whatever. And he was playing some rap music about somebody. I don't know who it was. I don't know. But... I didn't like this type of music. And that's my choice. I don't care if you say I'm shallow, so whatever. I got to listen to it. I ain't want to listen to that. 
And so I asked him, I was like, hey, you don't have no R&B? Because in my head, let me tell you, my king, he going to know how to court me. He going to be playing that baby face. You know what I'm saying? He going to be playing that silk. That Anthony Hamilton. Oh, yes, honey. Anthony Hamilton do something to me. You hear me, King? But he got he gonna know how to, you know, to soothe me. And 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 some 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 new school rap ain't it. And so I was like, hey, you ain't got no, you know, no R and B. Especially because like you say, he's 51. And he was like, oh, black folks. And I'm like, damn, you black too, thing. But anywho. I'm like, okay, you know, first date, you know, he probably just a little nervous. So we sat out, we talked for about, you know, two, three hours. And um, I went, came on in, in my place and went to sleep. So the next time <clears throat> we met up, um, he was already talking about, he wanted us to plan a trip out of town. And um, he was like, if, 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 if I plan this trip out of town, you know, you're going to get, now I'm telling, you know, I like, I'm going to tell you up front, this is, and, cause I'm straight up no chaser. This is spirits. Cause you're going to know what you're getting into. I'm celibate. I told him, I said, Hey, I just want you to know before you even, you know, proceed past go, I'm celibate and I'm not planning on giving it up until I am in a successful, secure relationship, or we have, you know, came up with an understanding, but it's all about me. It ain't about you, because this is my vagina. This ain't yours. So either you're going to deal with it or you're not, but I'm going to let you know. I ain't going to even sit up and play with you. If you're thinking you got to sit up here and woo me and you about to get some, I ain't the one. So he proceeded past go. So this is what he was doing. He was like, let's plan a one-day trip to go to the beach. We can get a room and all this. And I'm like, well, if we get a room, that means we got to sleep in the same bed. And that means you probably think you're about to get some. I'm like, well, why don't our first date kind of be like in Georgia? Like, why we can't, you know, go out to eat or um, go for a walk, go to the park, you know, go to the lake, whatever. We don't have to, you know, jump and go to the beach right now. I'm I'm good. And he was like, what you think about, uh, I, you know what? You seem like a cruise type of woman. I said, I am a cruise type of woman. I like cruises. Would you give up some on a cruise? Yeah, to my husband. I sure will. Um, smack it up, flip it, rub it down. Oh, yeah. But if you planning on taking me to a cruise, make sure they have a double bed because I'm not giving it up. And so one day... <clears throat> I, I don't know what I was doing, um, but I know I, I just recently completed a juice fast and we will get into that also. Um, but I just wanted to just kind of give my body a reset, especially because I'm on this journey and I'm always trying to be the best part of me and absorb the best part of any information that God and the universe has for me. And I know that sometimes you have to totally fast and let go of a lot of things so that you can just be with your thoughts and your energy. <clears throat> so I just completed, I, I was trying to do seven. I did it like four and maybe about four and a half. And by four and a half, I was over it, but it was still good enough for me to um, do a reset and it was super beneficial. And I'm definitely, definitely, definitely leave a comment below. Let me know if you want me to elaborate on the juice fast and the benefits of it and what it did for me because honey i got some great information about that but i definitely like i said i don't want to get off task i want to keep on addressing the topic at hand and that's why like i said we are shaking things up because there's so much stuff that we want to talk about and we know we don't have enough time to talk about it all in one sitting so comment 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 but back to the regular schedule program at hand i had just finished um a juice fast and um he was he had called him he was like hey can i come see you or not or whatever um he's like what are we having for dinner and i was like well i'm 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 on this juice fast right now he was like what that got to do with me red flag there you go red flag 
And I was like, well, it has nothing to do with you. And he's like, well, I got this here chicken. Now, mind you, I would entertain a meat eater, but I know in my heart, the guy that I want to be with would be vegan. I would even be open to a vegetarian, but they definitely have to be vegetarian or vegan. I've dated meat eaters on this vegan journey and it's, 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 it's not a good mix, especially when I'm caring about what I put in my body. When I sweat, I sweat pineapples. No, seriously, I do. Come smell me. I smell just like pineapples right now. I sweat and I smell like fruit. I smell sweet. So when my partner sweat, if they're not ingesting a clean vegan diet, they're going to smell like something else. And that even comes out in your urine and your semen and all of that. And the one thing my, my mother told me was like, how are you going to let some man who eat meat stick his thingy up in you? And it was like, it grossed me out because I never thought about it like that. But I'm like, yeah, why would, because when you have sex with somebody, y'all are exchanging souls. Y'all are exchanging DNA. Y'all are exchanging what's in him and what's in you. And if I'm not putting meat in my body, why am I going to allow his semen to put that in my body and that mucus and that disease and all of that? So I know whoever my, I know not whoever, I know that my king you hear me, King? My King would be vegetarian or vegan. Okay, King? Get on a good foot. Because that's what I that's what I need in my life. That's what I want in my life. But anywho, that was the second red flag. He was like, Well, he had bought him some chicken. I was like, okay, well, enjoy your chicken. And he was like, Well, can I come over there and get a kiss and a hug? I was like, not no chicken lips. Mm-mm. No, not like that. He was like, well, I brushed my teeth. And I was like, well, just call me when you get through eating. And like I said, I don't remember what I was doing when he called, but I was doing something. And when I got the phone, I think he had left me a voicemail and a text. But anyway, the text message said, you told me to call you when I got through eating. Um, I don't, this is what I'm talking about. All I want to do is be a priority, not an option. Now, mind you, the only thing me and this man done did was, you know, converse out in the parking lot and seen each other a couple of times, a little hug, and that's it. But we ain't went on no dates. We ain't had no deep conversations. You don't know my first name, last name. Only thing you know is my name is Spirit. That's it. You don't know my favorite color. You don't know what I'm allergic to. You don't know nothing, but you know my name is Spirit. And you want to be a priority? Honey. I had to gut punch his ass. I did. I did. Because I'm Spirit. I'm not who I used to be. I'm a whole nother person. I had to gut punch his ass. And I told him, I said... You are an option until you prove otherwise. And that's the truth. You are an option until you prove. What have you done to prove to me that you shouldn't be an option? You should be a priority. But sit up here and sit in my parking lot and talk to me playing some music that I don't even know what the heck they were saying. And then he tried to hit me with, he had bought some Kanye West tickets. Tell about some. I wish I would have known that before I bought you these flowers and these Kanye West tickets. Y'all think I feel bad? Hell no. Nah. I don't even like yay. The fuck? I was like, how you gonna buy some tickets for somebody you don't even know who I like, if I like them or not? I would have been mad as hell talking about we finna go see Kanye West. And I'm like, we who? I mean, don't worry. I, I, I fucks with some of Ye's stuff, but he ain't somebody I would want to go see in concert. I mean, if he was a, like, you know, somebody they brought on as a guest, but not to just go and see him in concert and not me. I wasn't impressed. I wasn't. And that's what I told him. I was like, but well, that's why you know that we really didn't know each other. I said, I feel that we would probably be better off as friends um, because... 
I don't feel like we are connecting. And I walked away from it and I felt good. <clears throat> Y'all see that? <clears throat> I felt good because I truly have control over my destiny. And that's how I started healing and being successful at it. You have to hold yourself accountable for your life. I want to blame my mother. Well, not no more. I used to want to blame my mother for every little thing that went wrong in my life. And some things I do blame her for. But I'm learning that I'm not angry with her. I accept it and I forgive her for it because she didn't know no better either. And I'm hoping that one day my children will be able to be me and say, you know what? My mother didn't know no better. But I, I, I'm going to accept who she is now. Because I truly didn't. I didn't know no better. But the things like, like the relationships I've been in and things like that, I totally hold myself accountable for that. Because I truly knew in my heart I shouldn't have been with them people. But I didn't think enough of myself to think that I was enough for somebody that was that would treat me the way that I deserve to be treated. And that comes from self-love. Why don't you feel that way? Why don't you feel like you deserve a great guy? Why don't you feel like you deserve a guy that's going to honestly and truly love you and worship you and love you unconditionally? He's going to provide for you. He's going to protect you. He's going to uplift you. He's going to be loyal and faithful. Because let me tell you something. People that go out here and cheat, they're doing that for validation. A lot of people don't go out here. And, and, and even like I said, with the person, my, my ex who cheated, he, he, he's claimed he cheated because I wasn't giving him enough. He was cheating because he needed validation. He told me that he cheated because, y'all ready? He said he cheated because when we had sex, he ejaculated fast. So he went out and cheated to see if it was me and I had the good good or if he really had a problem. He needed validation in his manhood because he couldn't accept that he was a two-minute brother. And the truth of the matter was, it didn't even bother me. I was I was glad it was over in two minutes. And that's not in husband. No. Seriously. With you, honey, I want you to go the long mile because I know you're going to know how to make love. But when somebody doesn't know how to make love and all they do is jumping on top of you and they just doing their business, it's all about self. I was just like, just hurry up and get it over with because I'm getting nothing out of this. So I was happy that he was a two minute brother. He was insecure with it. And that's why he was cheating. People who go out here and cheat, honey, stop thinking it's you. 